Hammertide. And uh, Loder, good morning. Good morning, how are you? So, I'm fine, how are you? And who are you? Uh, so, I'm Peter, I work for um, Van der Bron, Van der Bron, as you can ah. see on my shirt. Yeah. And um, should I tell um, some about uh, the company? Yes, please. Okay, well, we are a uh, peer to peer uh, energy supplier. So, we started uh, so a little over a year ago to uh, make it possible for anyone in the Netherlands now uh, to sell electricity to uh, anyone in the Netherlands. So if you have a surplus of electricity, so your solar panels or a windmill or um, biomass installation, you can now sell all your surplus electricity uh, through our platform to uh, anyone else in the, in the country. Okay, sounds really cool. Uh, I, or, I, I already know the initiative, so I've heard of it. So it's a really good, uh, good story. So how did you come to ID and how did you start uh, your, uh, your platform? Uh, well, basically the, the idea came from the, the fact when we were uh, driving uh, along uh, a windmill and uh, uh, I cannot say I had the idea myself, but uh, I know the, the story. So uh, the, um, the, the, it basically came from, okay, why can I just buy energy from, from this guy here? There, there are a lot of farmers who have uh, windmills and uh, people who have solar power but with excess capacity and uh, now we are really dependent on those big old energy companies who uh, make uh, life um, worse for us instead of making it better by building more uh, fossil fuel capacity instead of uh, renewable capacity and uh, really not making it clear where the energy you are buying is actually produced. So uh, we thought it was a simple solution to enable uh, anyone to sell their electricity to anyone. So then you have a clear idea where it's from, where your money is flowing to, and what kind of um, capacity you're supporting. And, and, and how did you create the platform? So how did you brought the, the, the concept from a concept to a real uh, physical platform? Um, so, well, uh, it's, uh, there are quite high uh, entry barriers to become an energy supplier in the country. You have to, uh, uh, there are a lot of legal requirements. So first we had to uh, raise an investment before we even could uh, launch an MVP uh, of about uh, 1.9 million. And we did this in uh, 2013. Uh, with investors, uh, Dutch uh, renewable investors like uh, the Hildes Bank, uh, the Dutch Green Tech Fund, and some other uh, private investors. And uh, then once we had um, the money, we could start uh, going into the legal process of becoming a through uh, energy supplier. And there are only about uh, 20 or 30 in the, in the country. So uh, that is uh, quite a process to become one. And only when you, when you have the license, you are allowed to uh, legally uh, sell electricity to, uh, to households. So the barrier to start was quite high. It's quite high. Yeah. Legal stuff, yeah. yeah. And how did you convince the, the investors? Uh, you said you raised 1.9 million euro. So that's quite quite a lot for uh, uh, when there's not uh, when there's not a product to show. So how did you convince the... Uh, 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 they are traditional and modern, but they are still also a little traditional. So how did you convince them uh, to invest in your idea? Uh, well, we... Uh, we started uh, with uh, a really big business plan. It was uh, about 180 pages, I think. So uh, it was really, uh, well, we, we thought a lot about it. And I think it, uh, it, uh, the process of writing and uh, adapting it and gathering feedback, uh, that was alone uh, over eight months. So uh, it, uh, that was a huge process. And um, then we, uh, well, we managed to convince them that uh, we were really thinking uh, this through and uh, we had uh, the experience to, uh, to be able to launch as a platform. So the, um, the, the three co-founders um, are uh, all have at least uh, five years of experience in renewable uh, startups. Some, one of them has uh, over 10 years. So that was a, a reason uh, for the investors to uh, not need an MVP uh, to, to invest in this product. Okay, so the experience of the founders was the was the ticket uh, to, to 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 convince I the uh, b besides the plan, of course. I think so. Yeah, I think that was uh, the the main uh, the main reason. And uh, where did you need, need this loads of money for to uh, uh, to make an MVP? Uh, what step did you have to take before you could even start? Well, there are a lot of uh, IT systems we need to have in place before we can, we can become an energy supplier. So uh, you have to be able uh, to have. Uh, 
all the, the flows of the, uh, the money and the contracts and uh, you need all different systems, uh, one for the customers, one for the suppliers, so that was a huge investment we had to do before we could even uh, launch, the, launch this, the company. And um, the energy market is a really uh, highly competitive market, so we also had a lot of uh, marketing uh, to do uh, before we could uh, yeah, to, to be sure we, we can uh, conquer a, a piece of this, uh, of this market so it's not uh, uh, it's hard to be a new entrant on this market so that you have to have some uh, uh, some cash in order to be able to stand stand out in the in the, in the battlefield of uh, energy supplies. and how did the uh, existing uh, energy organization respond because normally when I'm thinking about energy uh, and I I'm able to, to change every year from a supplier, but I'm just, uh, I think it's too boring to change. So, and then a product in the market uh, 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 entrance, uh, what is really, uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, isn't boring, uh, more sexy, it's about a nice story. So, uh, so that was, I think, a really a big uh, competitor for them. So how did they respond when you uh, uh, launched? Oh, well, uh, we, uh, they didn't respond uh, officially, so, uh, but we heard some insights from the, from the boardrooms and through connections we had some stories that uh, their responses range from, oh, this is uh, really exciting, uh, we should really uh, keep a close eye on them and see if uh, we can learn from this initiative because they seem to be uh, having a lot of sympathy from the consumer market. And on the one end and on the other end, oh my god, these are guys, they are really just uh, using the, the, st the stability we create with our fossil fuel uh, power plants to uh, tell a nice little story to consumers. Uh, so I believe that um, the ones on the, with the latter reaction, the, that are uh, the, two, uh, the two big uh, companies uh, uh, who are really invested into fossil fuel, that uh, they are kind of living in some kind of uh, illusion that uh, we are still uh, dependent on fossil fuels uh, for uh, decades to come and we think we can really make this transition a lot quicker uh, by uh, allowing people to uh, choose where their electricity is coming from and pay and uh, get the money directly to the source. And how did you uh, get your first uh, suppliers and demands on the platform? So the suppliers was uh, actually uh, quite easy because we offer them a higher price and um, if for example we have a windmill it's, uh, it makes a huge difference on a year to year basis. Okay, and, 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 and the demand of the uh, people uh, that were are going to need the energy? And uh, well on the demand side, so the, the consumer side, then uh, it, it gets a lot tougher because then you're really competing with uh, all the other big energy companies. Um, and the, the price benefit that you have for producers is also there on the consumer side, but it's a lot less um, attractive because the, the amount is a lot smaller, so the difference is also a lot smaller. So there's, um, uh, there's not a really, uh, well, the, the amount only won't uh, motivate you enough uh, to, uh, to switch in a lot of cases. So then we really had to start telling our story and um, we started doing this uh, last year through uh, a lot of um, uh, sales deals with um, organic markets, uh, other shops that would target a renewable um, and sustainable aware uh, audience and uh, really train, train your own people. Uh, we have a sales team of about 80 people. Uh, to um, to go there and really tell tell the story, uh, and uh, we notice that uh, if you have once um, have if you have like five minutes of attention of someone to, to explain it and to explain the the, the importance of uh, of choosing uh, the right kind of energy and uh, the, the impact this, this has on our future, then um, well 
it's, it's easy to motivate people to do it, but you really need this five minute attention uh, span, which is hard to get on another, uh, in another medium than uh, through face to face uh, conversation. Yeah, and, 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 and how do you see the future of Vanderbron? Because uh, uh, you're now uh, uh, bringing the market demand supply together using a peer to peer platform. Uh, but in the end, uh, there's also a chance that everybody will produce their energy themselves. So, how do you think Vanderbron still exists in 20 years? And, and when yes, how? In, in what form? Well, uh, we hope that uh, we are uh, contributing to uh, the, the end of energy suppliers as they exist now. So we actually are contributing to the end of our own business model in, in a way. But um, we are... Um, the difference between us and a lot of other energy suppliers is that we are already making the shift uh, from the start towards uh, a more service-oriented company. So. Uh, what we do, we we don't only uh, we don't uh, our business is not buying and selling energy. Uh, we don't buy energy for a price and then try to sell it with a margin. What we do is we uh, we have a fixed fee. You can compare it to Spotify, for example, of 10 euros per month, and then you get all or uh, you get a service pack. And for now, that includes uh, all the the transactions and the legal requirements for you to have energy in your house. But in the future, this will be uh, a lot, uh, a lot broader. And the less important uh, the energy uh, market will become, the more important the service market around energy will become, because people will have solar panels and maybe a Tesla Powerwall uh, at their house, and they would uh, want to have software to be able to uh, make the data useful, or uh, they would um, want to have uh, extra services around. Uh, these uh, their own pr energy production. Yeah, okay. So this is really where the the future of the energy company lies. In and do you think traditional energy companies can make this change, or do you think among guys close your doors and 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 uh, and uh, go re go and retire? Well, well, we it's uh, it's hard to tell. There are some companies who are doing better than others. Um, but uh, I think there, there will be uh, some, uh, we will see some uh, big uh, collapses in the energy market uh, within uh, maybe a decade. Uh, but I also think that um, other companies who are already making the transition now, uh, who used to be big on fossil fuels, but now are already going towards renewables, uh, that they might be able to, uh, to survive this, uh, this transition. But I think it won't be without, uh, without the damage to the, to the, local, to the current increments. Uh, Okay, really good. And um, because when you look at innovation and collaborative economy and platforms, most of the times there are uh, uh, players from outside a industry getting into a new industry. So nobody knows uh, uh, what their competitor is. So that gives you the opportunity as an organization to uh, uh, to expand your horizon. So also to get in other markets. Um, are there also other markets where Vanderbron uh, is going to be in the, the next couple of years? Uh, uh, well, we're concerning uh, product markets, we are focusing on energy now, but uh, geographic markets, we are really thinking of uh, expanding. So uh, we uh, we are now um, trying to to deliver a, a great product here in the Netherlands, and then uh, think of uh, scaling towards uh, neighboring countries uh, in the in the near future. Once we think we we got we got it right here. So, uh, but for for this moment, energy is our only uh, is our only product, and our own, the beauty of your marketplace is really what we're focusing on. And um, do you also have regret of the name of Vanderbron because it's it's really a, a Dutch name, so everybody in the Netherlands knows what it means and and what it stands for. But when you go to Germany or wherever, uh, nobody knows. So. Do you regret uh, of this name, or do you think okay, we're going to pick up in every uh, country a local name? Uh, well, there's a big discussion actually going on uh, here about uh, this uh, this fact. So uh, we don't know yet what we're going to do. We might uh, we might go for Vanderbron uh, worldwide because uh, it's a name that is we can you can pronounce it in any language, but you you lose the meaning. But it's still it's, it's like a, it's a name. Um, so, uh, but you could all, we could also go for a local uh, a local. Um, translation of the of the phone problem, uh, but we, we don't know yet we will I think we'll find out and uh, we'll, we'll think about it and then we'll make a decision in about six months or something.
six months. So, so, so in the next six months, we're going to get some news about your and your international ambitions. Well, uh, we, we might uh, be able to tell you a little bit more about it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, good luck with uh, with expanding your organization. Uh, I think it's a really, really great initiative and also a really nice disruptive in, in, a, in a quiet uh, market where many people think it's, it's quite boring, but you can do lots of uh, things uh, in it. Yeah, by the way, uh, we have, um, I was talking to you earlier about the fact we needed five minutes of attention to, to tell the, the product. And uh, we are now actually for the first time shifting towards a big uh, media campaign. So. Uh, to be able to tell it in 30 seconds. Uh, we, we try to, to make it as, as clear as possible. So uh, within uh, a month, we will be on national television with our first uh, television ad. So I hope uh, anyone who watches it uh, will be able to relate to it and uh, try to get a sense of, uh, of what we're doing. Okay, great. And I also will we'll post a link on the uh, uh, when it's online uh, in the blog. Great, thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Bye, bye.